Hey everyone, this week as promised, I'm gonna show you guys how to create a responsive navigation that goes from being your typical top navigation down to a mobile-friendly hamburger menu navigation. And for those of you who are not familiar with a hamburger menu, it's called a hamburger menu because this little three-line icon uh, looks like a hamburger with a top bun, a meat patty, and a bottom bun. It is that simple, that's why they call it a hamburger bun. Uh, if we click on this hamburger button though on our mobile menu, it turns into an X so we can close it, it expands, uh, we get this nice behavior where it actually pushes everything down. So if you were to continue navigating, you're not missing anything. The menu's not even covering anything, uh, which is really cool. I think it's really cool that Muse is even capable of that. And then we have our X and we can click our X to close it and it turns back into the hamburger. So it's really smooth and uh, animated and responsive. And I'm going to show you guys how to create that right now. Heading back into Muse here, you could see that the problem that we're trying to solve is that at smaller screen sizes, our navigation just doesn't fit. Uh, you can see here how it overlaps the logo. It, it just isn't right, and that's not going to work. So back to our desktop uh, version here where it does fit. We're still going to use these same buttons. We're going to recycle these. And uh, in recycling these, we just need to put them into an expandable container and maybe make the font a little bit bigger to be more mobile friendly. I'm going to be doing all of this on a second page. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of layers, and I don't want to get confused with all my layers, and I don't want to be selecting the wrong thing all the time, and I recommend doing this too, because you can just copy and paste it over when you're ready. So I have this extra page that just has the navigation at the top, and uh, that way I've just got more of a blank canvas to work with. So now, to get started, uh, this entire widget is based off the built-in accordion panel uh, that's built into Muse. It's one of the available widgets built into Muse. So you want to go over to the widgets library. Not the library, not CC libraries. They, they've made it a bit confusing now with all these library panels. You want the one called widgets library, which you can access from window widgets library if you don't see it on your screen already. So once you're here, there is, well, there are a bunch of folders. Uh, there's one called panels, and inside that there is a choice called accordion. And when you drag in the accordion panel, the idea is that it's an informational panel that has multiple sections to it. Uh, we're only going to use one section, the section that hides our navigation and reveals our navigation. So we're going to click and hit delete to get rid of the other two. There we go. So now we're down to just one section. Now, the next thing I want to do is click away and click back on it one time. Do a right click or a two finger click if you're on a Mac laptop. And we want to choose clear all styling. There we go. Now that we've cleared all styling, uh, we're not going to have to undo the border. We're not going to have to undo any fills or anything. It's now transparent and it's a fresh, fresh start. The next thing I want to do is another right click and clear widget contents uh, to get rid of the text box inside. And the next thing I want to do is click again on the title and then one more time on the title bar. Uh, you may have to double click to get in and edit the text, uh, but I want to get in there and I want to remove the text. So I have a truly hollow shell. And then escape will bring us back, escape again will bring us back again, escape again will bring us back again. And now we have a truly empty widget here. Uh, the next thing I want to do, I want to scoot it up here to the top of the screen, and I want to click on the top bar section, and I want to drag the size of it down so it's the same height as my navigation bar. So now I've got more of a, a fitment working for me uh, in terms of making it fit my existing navigation bar. And then I'll click the bottom content area and I'll make that a little bit taller. Now this can get a little weird with clicking one time, clicking two times. Uh, these accordion widgets, composition widgets, they're very finicky about how many times you click. Because you click once to select the entire widget, you click again to select a part of the widget, you click again to go into that part of that widget. So if you make a mistake, you can hit escape to go back, uh, or you can click away. Uh, if you just hit escape a few times, you'll go back to having the entire widget selected, and you can then move that around. So don't get too frustrated. Now another thing to consider is that this is expanded. <clears throat> it's hard to tell because it has no content in it, but this is expanded, and if I click at the top, it's still expanded. So it's not yet behaving like our hamburger menu where it collapses and expands and collapses and expands. So to make it behave that way, we click on this little blue disclosure triangle, and we choose Can Close All. When you choose Can Close All, now clicking collapses it and expands it. You can tell by this little plus sign that's going away and coming back to the bottom. 
in order to see this really happening, let's give our color fill to our content area down here. So I'm going to click on the content area. Uh, make sure you're in the content area and you have a solid border around the content area down here at the bottom. If you don't, you may have to click again. And then I'm going to go up to fill. And personally, I'm doing a gradient fill to match my gradient at the top here. And I'm going to set my start color to this pink color. I'm going to set my end color to this purple color. You can do whatever you want. You can do a solid fill, you can do an image fill, anything you want. I'm just trying to make it match uh, my navigation bar at the top. And now that I've done that, when I expand and collapse it, you can actually see it happening. So we have this new behavior where it can be expanded or it can be collapsed. If you double click, it'll go inside this as a text box. So uh, don't do that unless that's what you want to do. So now I've got my empty top section. I've got my color filled, gradient filled bottom section. And I'm ready to start making this uh, have content inside. So the first thing I want to do, I have a couple of icons here, and you guys can use whatever icons you like. I'm just using this generic hamburger icon SVG and this generic clothes icon SVG. If you guys love icons, you can head to museresources.com. You can get the icon mega pack for yourself. Uh, it includes a bunch, of, I believe 458 uh, vector icons that are all SVGs that are compatible with Muse. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, you'll have a bunch of stuff like this. So I've got this icon here that I need to be inside uh, the top part of the accordion on the right hand side uh, so that it can be clicked. And in order to get this to behave responsibly and in order to get this to do exactly what I want it to do, it needs to be the background image for this bar pushed over to the right and uh, scaled to fit. So what I'm going to do is with this hamburger icon selected, I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to do command C for copy. You can do command or control C for copy. And then I'm going to click on this top half. I'm going to make sure I have just the top half selected. And you'll notice that up here it says normal. When I click again, it says active. The hamburger, the hamburger icon, is for the normal state before it's expanded. The close icon is for the active state when it's open. Because we want to close it when it's open. We want to open it when it's closed. So I just copied the hamburger icon. So I want to make sure I'm in the normal state when I right click and choose paste as background image. When you choose paste as background image, it may not go where you want it, but then we're gonna go up to fill, and we're gonna choose to align it on the right center, or right middle, and I'm gonna switch fitting to scale to fit. So that way if I make this bigger or smaller, it'll look right, it'll continue to scale. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna click on the X, I'm going to hit Command C for copy. You can do Command or Control C, whether you're on a Mac or a PC. Then I'm going to expand this. And with it expanded, you'll notice the hamburger is still there. So when we expand and collapse, it doesn't really make much sense. It's not indicating uh, what it's doing here. So in the active state, with it expanded, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to do a two-finger click, a right click, on this top half. And I'm going to choose Paste as Background Image again. So now it's pasted the X as the background image for the active state. And if I go back to the normal state, we have the hamburger icon. So we've got this switch back and forth taking place the way we want it. So the next thing I want to do is in the normal state, I'm going to click up here and I'm going to add a fade transition and I'm going to make it 0.2 seconds. I want a really fast fade uh, so that it fades from the hamburger icon to the X icon. And I'm going to leave the speed on ease. Really, I just want a fade with a duration of 0.2 seconds. And I'm going to go over to active and make sure that that applied, and it did. When you apply a transition to the normal state, it automatically applies it to every other state, which is pretty cool. And if you're not seeing these transition settings, hit the triangle next to the word transition or the word transition itself. That'll reveal those settings for you. So then, now that we've got all of this set, I'd like to preview it in the browser just to make sure that this is working the way we want it to. Another thing to note before you preview it in the browser is if it's expanded already, when you preview it in the browser, when you publish your site, it will be expanded already. If it's collapsed already, it will be collapsed already. So I would like it to be collapsed already. I'm going to hit Shift Command E to preview in the browser. Shift Control E if you're on a PC. And uh, now on this page, because it's white on white, we can't really see it. But if you get your cursor in the right spot, uh, you'll be able to click on it. What I should have done is scooted it up to the top so we could see it. So let me go back and do that. I'm going to scoot it up onto the navigation bar. Obviously, this isn't what it's going to look like when it's done, uh, but I just want to be able to see the, the hamburger button instead of it being white on white. So when I click on that, there we go. So it is behaving the way it's supposed to behave. It's a little glitchy because I'm doing a screen recording at the same time as I'm showing it to you guys. So the computer's having a little trouble with the screen recording 
uh, with the animation at the same time. So now that I've got this established, I've got to expand it and get my content inside. So I'm going to make this a little bit taller. I'm going to go and click on these buttons up here. I'm going to hold shift so I can select them all. I'm going to hit copy and then I'm going to go into this content area and hit paste. And now that I've got these icons in here, I just need to kind of line them up. So I'm just going to uh, click on visualize, swipe, get each one of these where it belongs. See the single click versus two clicks thing becomes really important here because you can easily make some mistakes. And now I'm going to get all four of these selected. I'm going to move get it now up a little higher. I'm going to get all four of these selected. I'm going to go to the alignment panel. I'm going to make sure a line is set on content area so it aligns uh, in the center of its respective content area. I'm going to choose center and then I'm also going to choose uh, to distribute vertically. But you'll notice when I choose distribute vertically it distributes it from the top edge to the bottom edge of the content area. So I'm going to hit command Z to undo that. When I distribute vertically I'm going to change that to align to selection. So it just distributes from the top of the top item down to the bottom of the bottom item. And now those are lined up and evenly distributed. You may need to make your box bigger or smaller at this point. Uh, I'm going to keep mine right about here. And then I'm going to go back in, select all these, and I'm going to make the font a few points bigger. Let me just go to, uh, actually, let, let's demonstrate this real quick. If I go up to 16, you'll notice that the, uh, the text gets a little cut off. But we have these triangles that allow us to manage just our selection here. And uh, with that, I can drag, and it makes them all wider at the same time. That's a relatively new feature. You used to have to do it one item at a time, or you'd have to go and group them together and scale the group. So now we have these little, uh, I guess it's not a triangle, it's a diamond. Uh, we have these little diamonds to click and drag. And then I can go back and I can align, center align these to my content area again. So that's looking good. Now I actually have my items uh, where they belong on the menu. Now a few more things to consider is how this is going to res behave responsively. And there are a few considerations to make in, uh, in getting a proper responsive result. So I'm going to select all these again. Two things that I want to do. I don't want them to resize. I don't want these boxes to resize. I want to leave them alone. Even if the browser gets more narrow, I want to make sure that the text doesn't get smushed and end up on two lines. These aren't paragraphs. These are single blocks of text. So I want to leave the resize on none. The other thing is I want these to be pinned and positioned relative to the center of the browser. I want this to remain centered. And then I'm going to click away and click back on the widget itself and do the same thing for the widget itself. Pin it to the center. I want it to remain centered. I want its content to remain centered uh, even as the device or the browser gets bigger and smaller. That's a very important step. Otherwise, this won't be centered. So now I think I'm ready to copy and paste it where it belongs. So I'm going to hit Command C to copy it. I'm going to go over to my welcome page here. I'm going to go to the mobile breakpoint, and now these are in the way. So I'm going to choose each and every one of these, and I'm going to right-click. Don't hit delete. <laughs> don't, don't just delete them, otherwise they'll be gone from everywhere. Uh, I'm going to do a right-click, and I'm going to choose hide in breakpoint, which is what last week's tutorial was all about. So now that I've hidden those in this breakpoint, they still show up in the desktop breakpoint. And I'll go back to the mobile breakpoint and hit paste to paste in my menu. And now that I've got my menu, or actually that's not, it didn't copy and paste my menu, that's not good. All right, I'm going to go back to my other page here. Click on this, Command C for copy, come over here, Command V for paste, there we go. I don't know why it didn't work the first time. Uh, I probably did something wrong. So now we've got a layer ordering issue. See how it's going underneath the nav bar? Now in my case, uh, my nav bar may be on a different layer altogether. So what I want to do is do a right click on my widget and I want to choose move to layer and make sure it's on my topmost layer. In this case I do have uh, this nav layer. So now that it's on the top of that layer it shows up on the very 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 tippy top. The thing is uh, the battle may not be over for you. You may have to then bring it to the front. It may be on the right layer but it may be behind something so you may have to do uh, another right click and choose arrange and then uh, bring it to the front. In my case I can't bring it to the front because it's already in the front and that's why my menu may look different from yours. Uh, but just be sure that it's brought all the way to the front. Cool. So now that it's here, the other thing we have to do, since we told it to center itself uh, relative, really it's relative to its position, remain centered relative to your position, we don't want it pushed over to the right. We want it to be the full width. And that's one of the reasons that we made it a transparent 
uh, top half instead of filling it with that gradient because uh, we don't want it to interfere with anything. Uh, the other thing is if your logo is a button or if your logo is a hyperlink here, um, don't put your accordion on top of it, otherwise it won't be clickable. So you may want to do, in my case, uh, command with the bracket keys. Uh, if you do command in the right bracket, it brings it forward. Command in the left bracket sends it backward. And you may have to send it backwards so that it's behind the logo. Um, it's really up to you guys if you have a conflict with the logo. The other thing you could do is if I click and drag and select both of these, uh, and I end up with just the logo selected, uh, I could do shift command in the bracket with just the logo selected, which can be tricky. Um, in fact, I could scoot this back over to select the logo, and I could do shift command in the right bracket to bring it to the front, and then I can grab this and pull it back, and that will be on top. Shift command right bracket is the shortcut for bring to front. Shift command left bracket is the shortcut for send to back, which are two shortcuts that I use a heck of a lot in Adobe Muse. So now I don't have that, uh, that overlapping issue anymore. So let me preview this in the browser. Taking its sweet time. Here we go. So at this breakpoint, it should automatically hide that menu. There we go. And then when I click on it, it should expand. There we go. So it's looking good. It's looking like we're almost done here. I say almost done because some of you may have noticed that on this larger breakpoint, the menu shows up. Because I told, I specifically told Muse to hide this on the mobile breakpoint, but I didn't specifically tell Muse to hide this on the desktop breakpoint. So there are two ways to go about this. We've already done it the way where you right click on something and you choose hide and breakpoint. What I'm gonna do is from here where I want it, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna choose hide in other breakpoints. So I have an issue here. I've accidentally clicked inside of the widget. Here we go. So sometimes you have to click away and click back on it. Uh, but we do need to hide this in other breakpoints. And uh, for some reason, I'm not getting what I expect here with hiding it in other breakpoints. And you may have this problem sometimes with widgets as well. And it's not a problem. That right click is not the only way to do it. We can also go to the layers panel. And from the layers panel, we can go to the breakpoint that we want to hide it from. We can go find it. And it is here, accordion. And we can choose to hide it on the layers panel in this particular breakpoint. And when we go back to this breakpoint, it doesn't hide it here because the visibility on the layers panel is specific to the breakpoint that you're looking at, which is something that we discussed last week. So feel free to use the layers panel if the right click menu isn't doing what you want it to do because trust me, it won't always do what you want it to do. So it looks like we're done. We, uh, we pretty much nailed it. So uh, it is that easy. It uses the accordion widget. We're using a background fill for the icon, which is kind of a curveball. I thought that was kind of a curveball. Uh, you may use an SVG file as a background fill to, to get the, the best quality, but you could also use a PNG. You can use whatever you want, really. Um, and uh, that's all there is to it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this tutorial. Stay tuned. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Next week I have something very interesting coming for you guys. So uh, be ready for that and subscribe if you haven't already. So see you guys soon.